joining us now, I'm very excited. We have baritone Eric Green. Eric is originally from Baltimore, Maryland, and has performed in opera houses and concert halls all over the country and the world, including, but not limited to, Washington National Opera, Liceo Barcelona, the Royal Opera House Covent Garden, English National Opera at the Spoleto Festival, just to name a few, and is now making his Metropolitan Opera debut in the role of Benny Kidd Perrette in Terrence Blanchard's Champion. And a fun fact, he is a Virgo, and favorite thing is fruit is a cherry or anything cherry flavored. So now you know a little bit about, about, about him professionally and personally. So I want to welcome Eric onto this virtual stage with me. Hi, Eric. <laughs> Hi, how are you, Ray? It's great to be I'm, here. <laughs> I'm great. Thank you so much for joining us and for humoring me with my little intro. <laughs> so I want to jump in and we have a little tradition here at Met Opera Ed that we, you know, we love a timer. We love 30 seconds to one minute of a challenge. So okay. I'm going to set a little timer. I'm going to put you on the spot and I want to kind of hear the story of your life in a minute. Oh, wow. If you, if you can. So I'm going to get ready to, I'm going to give you a little countdown. I'm putting you on the spot, but you're a professional. You can do this. Okay. So what in three, two, one. All right. Well, it began in Baltimore, Maryland, a uh, curious little boy, uh, full of energy, full of lots of imagination. And that got me into lots of trouble, but never uh, trouble for being disrespectful, but always for being a little bit too animated or a little bit too talkative or too excited or too excitable. And uh, I lived through those years and tried to find out who Eric was and who I was going to be and uh, met a wonderful lady in high school who directed me to music, uh, classical music. And um, not just music, but classical music, because I started music very young, four years old, church choir, grew up singing, um, heard singing, but uh, classical music was high school. Then high school, pushed me to college and uh, was directed to the Juilliard School. After Juilliard School, I moved away, started doing my thing and had children. Now here I am now, talking to Ray. <laughs> I know, it's, like, it's it's a challenge, right? But that was that was a lot. It always gives us like a really great- I got a little hung up. I got hung up <laughs> going back. I should have kept going forward. No, it's and great. I, 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 that's something that comes up a lot where people really, artists that we've, where we've interviewed and had the, the privilege of sharing space with, talk a lot about their early teachers and influences. Yeah. And I'm actually wondering if there was a, an early influence that, um, like that, that person that you just mentioned that kind of encouraged you on the path that you are on now. Absolutely. It was, uh, in high school that I met someone who, uh, my voice teacher then, uh, just, she, introduced me to a world that I had no idea would change my life. You know, I always say music saved my life. And mm. uh, music was uh, re really the conduit that um, allowed me to, um, to, you know, to realize all that I, I, I am today, all that I hope, for, hope to be tomorrow and all of that, you know, it's just, it's, it encompasses everything. Music is such a part of my makeup and who I am I, I and I owe her a lot she happened to be there too on opening night so that was really exciting oh, oh yeah. wow that's amazing that was in the states so it was really nice that she was able to come and it was nice to hear what she had to say and see her pride and her approval of what I'm doing vocally and what I, who I've become as an artist and so it was really great and that was very rewarding and uh yeah so that's amazing to hear um I'm curious to know, wait, but were you interested in opera prior to this teacher kind of encourage no. you, encouraging you on that path? No, not at all. I mean, I, I grew up, my background was gospel. And of mm -hmm. course, you know, you had no R&B because you hear it around you and things like yes. that, but more popular music. But gospel was really a heavy, uh, you know, you know, it was very a part, it was a part of my, uh, of my life. For so long, I grew up with my, my grandmother and great grandmother sort of raised me. So I grew up in church and uh, it was gospel. So if in any singing that I did was gospel. And so I thought that that was the 
route that I was going to go. Not that I wanted to be a gospel singer, but if I did sing, it would only be it would be gospel. Mm -hmm. But you know, meeting meeting my voice teacher, her name is Jean Carter, and meeting her in high school, and it was like, uh uh uh, you can't set you can't <laughs> that voice up with screaming gospel. No, <laughs> that's what she said to me. So I was like, who is this devil woman that's telling me not to sing gospel? <laughs> not, a de not the so, devil woman. <laughs> I mean, well, you, I mean, well, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, in the church, you know, it's all, it's either, you know, you're, you're doing, you know, God's thing or you're doing the devil's thing. So it was that kind of thing. And to say not to sing this type of music was like, what? You know? Right. But I mean, right. I didn't say what to her like that, but I, in my mind, I was thinking, what is, this? you know, but the, but the, but the music that I was given and it opened it opened up another part of me that I didn't know existed, and I didn't know I had. You know, the romantic side, the nat nature side. You know, it was so much. I mean, nature, and um, you know, the the, the Italian art songs are definitely the German lead. Uh, German art songs speak so much about nature and how it's. Um, it is congruent with your love, the love interest, you know, not that I was really that much in love with anyone in high school, but the thing of it is, was just to, to describe a person through nature was so amazing to me. And, uh, and it made me tap into that part of me because I did, I love the outdoors and, you know, so it was, um, I'm an earthy, earthy person. So, I, you know, I think that, that, um, that really spoke to me, it just resonated. And, uh, and I was like, wow, this is what, I like this music, you know, and I want to sing this music. And, and the more I learned about it, the more I wanted to do it. And then the opera was over after I met, after I was introduced to opera, it was it. I was like, yes, <laughs> I can be someone else. No one knows who I am. I can, you know, change. I can morph into different characters. I can, you know, change my appearance. I can wear costumes, you know, at all. it was just great. You know, lights, camera, action. It was that kind of a thing for me. And I was like, wow. Yeah, that's, all that's of that creativity and energy, you know, I could put it into that and it was used. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible to hear. And of course, so many of us are familiar with or or have a taste of of the rigorous training that goes into becoming an opera singer. And, you know, when I was in conservatory, right. a lot of times people would equate it to like the heavy weight lifting of the vocal arts. And I'm wondering mm. if you can speak a little bit to that, but also specifically within the context of Champion, you know, in, in, in panels that we've had also speaking with some other people in the show, like, like Speedo, like talking about the physical training that also went in because you're playing a real person, someone who yes. lived, who lived. And I'm wondering yeah. what the preparation for this role in particular, how that was maybe different from other roles that you've held that you've that yeah. you've played in, in other operas like physically yeah. vocally or even just anything in your approach to it yeah so um definitely definitely physically um there were preparations that had to be you know specific pre pre preparations not just being in shape you know in general i like to be in shape and uh you know and normally when i'm in an opera i'm very physical i'm a physical actor so I have to be in certain amount of shape to be able to um, accommodate what a director may ask, you know, just the moving, lifting, jumping, running, you know, anything like that to be in condition and then to be able to do those things and then sing. So I try to keep myself in a certain amount of shape for that. But specifically to this role, it was different, uh, like no other role because I was, I was to, to play a boxer. So, and that's something I didn't have a point of reference uh, for, you know, um, so I had to learn the language, as it were, uh, of, 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 of a boxer, the physical language of a boxer, the stance, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 um, the agility that one has to have just in the ring, just with the feet itself, just keeping them moving, bouncing on your toes, which is very different from a singer. You were never bouncing our toes and then sing something. We are very flat footed and standing, you know, and standing as straight as we can and using our feet as a, really as stability, you know, as a, as foundation. And to be off of your foundation, to be hopping around, you know, I didn't know what, whether I would be singing and hopping around or whether I, you know, so when I got there, you know, to hear what 
uh, the, the director, Jim Robinson had in mind, it was, you know, I didn't have to jump around while I was singing, but, you know, uh, because a fight happens without me singing when I'm not singing, but it was still something that I had to prepare for. Mm -hmm. And then to also get the, you know, the movements of a boxer. So that was really different. And there were, there was hours of training for that. And then even more after I got here, I had a little back injury during the time that I wanted to train. So I couldn't train as long as I wanted to. So I did have some training initially. And then I got more after I got here um, with working with the staff here um, at the mat. They had someone, Mike Mike Benson, to come in. And yeah. uh, and he was able to um, lead us both into, and lead all of the fighters into, the boxers into what looked more more like a boxer or, you know, just, you know, he was really on us about where our feet were, you know, the direction of the one foot in, in the, as opposed to the other and just things like that and making sure that your punches are really coming from, you know, from up here and, you know, things like that, just keeping us on our P's and Q's, just, just like a vo vocal coach would or the diction coach would, you know, it's not that we can't speak English or we can't, we don't know how to sing, but there are people listening to make sure you're staying on where, staying on your mark, as it were. And so it was nice to have a fight coach or a fight representative who was there to also do that, you know. It's so wonderful that you mentioned Michael Bent. He was our guest today and earlier on in our opera book club. Oh, Bent, around Bent, Ch <laughs> yeah, Sorry, and... and one thing that came up was um, kind of like the subtext of a punch that, uh, you know, a uh, left hook is like, get out of my face. This, you know, depending on the yeah. movement, you're sending a different message. Do you feel like that rings true with with your experience in this in this opera? Absolutely. Yes, it does. I mean, you know, and, and then to put and then to put words to the action, you know, as it were. You know, to him to say this, this, you know, he said those things to us too. A left hook means, you know, get out of mm -hmm. my face. But yeah. to think <laughs> that when you're doing it, it gives it more, it gives it, this gives it a little bit more, you know, um, meaning, you know, just gives, it gives it a purpose. I should say not meaning, it gives it purpose, mm. you know, to what you're doing. So I, I thought that was very cool to, you know, but all of those things you wouldn't know if you didn't uh, speak with a fighter, you know what I mean? Right, this, right. Yeah, it's not our, it's not our field of, you know, of play, you know, yeah. so it's nice to have someone who really knows the, all of the positions of that, you know, and, the, you know, so it was really cool. So you've, you've spoken on this, you've touched on this a little bit, just in terms of like the physical preparation and understanding um, the world of a boxer to, in playing Benny Perret, but I also wonder if there are other places where you feel connected to him and what was an easy point of connection and what felt like a stretch whether it's the physical aspect or something that was cultural like in the like he's from Cuba I mean I don't actually know um your your cultural background specifically but I didn't know if that was something that was new or different so interesting to play characters actually the Caribbean was pretty well represented in this in this opera <laughs> yeah um so I um the the uh, a point of um a point of uh, connection was to go out and do something when you're not even really feeling well, you know, or not mm. feeling up to doing it, but you know, you have to. So I, I, I connected with him on that, just going out to do the fight to that last fight. He was not really up to, up to par. He knew he wasn't up to par, but he knew he had to. So he went ahead and did it, you know, and that, you know, doing it because someone else is, sort of saying you need to or you have to and then you all know the also the responsibility and the obligation you have to your family to go out and make a living you know those kind of things that push you so I could connect it with him that way um the part that was a little bit hard I could connect more with the son than I could with with Benny Perret um I have more more points of connection with with the son uh and when I played that role you know but the Benny's Benny the kid Perret was more it was at the of the obligation of having to do something, you know, I, that rang true with me. So I could connect with him. That was my way in, as it were. Mm -hmm. The part that was a little hard that I had to, you know, be, you know, the actor had to come over. I had to, you know, to uh, to stand up and uh, take over, and and also realizing that it's a character and not you was the taunting, you know, to to um, 
to you know especially to um to, to say hurtful words to people you know because i know i grew up with hurtful words being said to me you know I, i'm sure that's a testimony that everyone probably can say something was said to them horribly horrible uh, you know some someone said something horrible to them or taunted them or teased them about something but you know me going to school that was never me i was never a teaser i was teased i was teased for many reasons um but to uh to be the one to tease some to tease another person that wasn't me so that was very hard to do and but you know of course i got over it because it's, i know it's, i'm playing a character and then so i had to commit to it so the commitment to it was not Eric committing to it because this is me, but Eric committing to it because this is the character that I'm playing. So that, you know, I had to find, I had to actually switch gears and go there, yeah. but that was difficult, you know? So, yeah. And it's not just because, you know, we're all sensitive to the, to the word now bullying and all of that kind of stuff. It's, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with the climate that we're in. It really has to do with the person that I am, you know, that's just, that never was me before we even because then, you know, when I was going to school, we didn't hear words about bullying or we couldn't right. go to the teacher and said, I feel bullied or, yeah. you know, someone could, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't our word, you know, so that was, is really as innate to who I am, that that was not me. So that was something that I had to really deal with. And I dealt with it before I even came to the Met, you know, before I got to the Met, I dealt with that, you know, at home in preparation. That was so I could come and not have a hang up when I did it or I yeah. didn't have to mention it. You know, because it no, you know, it's not like it's that's that's single to me that I don't like to to be a bully. I don't think anyone was going to walk in and say, you know, hey, I'm a bully and I love doing it. You know, I love doing this. So this is my thing. You know, so you have to deal with things beforehand. So when you come, you can do your job and right. uh, without excuses or any like, you know, this is very hard for me to do. You know, get over it. I mean, you you know, you're supposed to, you're supposed to have gotten over that before you came to. You know, you now we now we have to do a job. You know, we're here to do the job. Right. So, yeah. So, so some of that mental. I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. I'm sorry. We're having a little connection problem, but I. Oh no, I worries. Finished. On yeah. the zoomosphere, that happens sometimes. But I, I, what I'm hearing is also like the mental preparation that goes into it, even the emotional preparation yes. when you really have to step outside Absolutely. of yourself to embody this character and have that on point. So when you get there, you can take those vocal notes, those musical notes, that stage direction and get those things all where they need to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have a couple more minutes left and one one question i wanted to ask as well was just kind of you know a met debut is no small thing right no small potatoes as no. they say um no. so i'm curious to know how preparing for this debut has maybe been different or how you've just kind of felt through the process of that um so i i didn't hear all of it because we broke up but i think i heard the latter the last part of what you were saying i think i can do you tell me if i'm leaving anything out from what you asked me, but, but yes, the whole process, the, the, you know, the walking up, getting my badge, walking <laughs> into the, you know, walking into the stage door, not as, not to audition, but actually to work was, um, is just a thing, you know, and to walk back in, and to go to throughout the whole building, you know, have access to the building, you know, it was, that's that each day was more and more, um, I mean, it's more and more, I, I revealed another layer of, or pull back another layer of, of excitement and wow and gratitude and gratefulness. And, you know, it just all of it because, you know, and, did, and then to also say, wow, you, 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 and a sense of accomplishment. I'll say, I'll just leave it at that. I won't go into any examples. I'll just use that word, a sense of accomplishment. Uh, at, at, you know, I went to Juilliard for six years. I did my both my degrees there at Juilliard. And I always eyed the Met. And we were on the same plaza. And, you know, even though we were on the same plaza, it's a long walk from mm. Juilliard to the Met. It's not as quick as you think it is. And in the journey that I've had to get here, I'm happy with everything that I did to get here. Every, every, you know, when I wanted to be here earlier, it wasn't time. And, you know, and I thought that I should have been there for something else. It wasn't time, you know, but I had something else in place of that, that prepared me to be here today. So when I'm here, I know that I've earned it. I, I know that no one gave it to me. No one was like, 
oh, okay, well, we're going to just try you out and you can, you know, do this now. <laughs> I had, I've gone through the growing up. I've gone through the growing pains. I've, um, I went through the, um, you know, to the prep, how to prepare music, how to prepare a character, you know, all of that. I did that outside. I did that in Europe. I've done that in other opera houses in America and, you know, but, and then to be able to have, uh, you know, to, to, to do leading roles throughout Europe and in America and now to come here, do this role. I mean, it's, it's, it, I, I don't have the pressure of a lead of the, being the lead, but I have the pressure of being a leading role. I don't, I'm not the, the lead, but I have a leading role and I know I can support the lead and support the whole opera with all of the knowledge that I have, you know, and that's what I think the Met is. That's what the Met is always represented for me. It's that you go out, you, you, uh, you obtain knowledge and you come back when you've grown up to stand there and sing with the, you know, with the big dogs as it were, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and to be a part of the fabric of all of the great singers and artists that have gone before me, you know, all of them, you know, and I, I just, now I'm vibrating my vibration goes with them, you know, it's out there with theirs, mm. with their vibration. And it's, and I'm, it's humbling. It's not anything that like, I walk around and say, "Oh, I'm, I'm done my Met debut. I'm a Met. I'm a Met singer now." You know, <laughs> it's not that. It is so humbling. It, it is so the opposite for me. It's like, wow, <laughs> you know, I'm so grateful that I, you know, that I stuck with it this long that I could make it to this place. Mm. But don't worry, it's I'll that. talk you. I'll talk you up. I'll go around and be like, "Hey, Eric's making his Met debut." Yeah, yeah but, he, but, but I'm so grateful. I mean, I'm really grateful. <laughs> any, any, whenever I have to talk about it, it it's, it's humbling. More yeah. so than it is like, you know, it has the hype. Is the hype is, you know, you're, you're making your Met debut. But the but the real the real center of it for me is like, you know, I'm so grateful that I've made it, you know, that I've made it to this this place. Because it's still more achievement to, to make, you know, but this is a great achievement. This is one of those great achievements, you know, and it's and I'm grateful for it. You know, when I sang at Covent Garden, I was the same way. I was like, wow. You know, think about all the people that have sung on this stage and have walked through these halls. And right. now you're, you know, you're, you're here. Your, your talent has grown up enough or matured enough. You've worked hard enough and diligently enough or consistently enough for it to be able to stand here on this stage. And that's what, that's, that's the reward, you know. And, uh, and when I talk to kids or I do master classes or anywhere, I mean, that's what we live for. You live to be able to sing that, to sing this aria. You just don't want to sing this aria because, you know, you're a soprano or you're a tenor or you're a baritone, you can sing this aria. No, is that have you done the work to be able to bring what Verdi had in mind, what Puccini had in mind, in this case, what Blanchard had in mind? You know, are you able to there, stand there and affect what he wrote on that page? Mm. You know? I mean, I can't think of a more beautiful place to land for for to, as we conclude this interview i feel like i could talk to you for much longer oh but... i would do I, 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 <laughs> I, I love talking to you ray it's wonderful, it's wonderful. it really I, is wonderful thank you so much for joining for sharing a little bit of your story with us we really appreciate it and um a lot of our folks on this call will have the chance to see you in the hd live broadcast on april 29th Yay. so we're you know we'll just keep rooting for you and thank you so much for joining us to, tonight thank you so Eric. much thank you for having me ray and, and all the best to everyone and looking forward to seeing you guys at the theater <laughs> yes all right okay. thank you take care all right bye bye wow oh. I love hearing artist stories. I always get a little of a clumps.